My question actually has to do with your uh, numbers theory. Um, so if by your logic you say one times one equals two, um, are you insinuating that one times zero then equals one? Equals one. Well, that's what we were saying with the identity principle. The identity property, it says that one times nothing equals nothing. Something, so now you have, the laws of physics have to now adjust because something just disappeared. Do you see that? So then, are you saying that one times five would be six? Yes. Well, what does it say in the associate, the, the associative and commutative thing? So you're if proposing... If A and B are positive integers, it says if A and B are positive integers, A is to be added to itself as many times as is indicated by units in B. So you're not proposing an audit, you're proposing like a, a re whole, well, I'm not the first one of the way we, we understand math. I want you all to take out your phone for a minute then. We're gonna do one thing. Everybody got a phone? Put it on the calculator and turn it to the side so you can get all the long numbers out of it, okay? Now I want you to put in two and square root it. Two, hit the square root, you'll get 1.414213562373095 dot dot dot, right? Now I want you guys to do me a favor, cube it. It'll see right over there, it'll be x to the three. Can y'all do it? Have you cubed it? It'll see 2.828-4271-2174-6190. Now that makes sense. I want you guys to do me a favor, divide it by two, get that number, cube it again, divide it by two, cube it again, and I want you to do that until the end of your lives. And that number will still come up with 2.828-4271-2174-6190. Any other number that you, above two, that you put in and you cube and you square, cube and square and divide by two, by the six operation it has moved into an exponential number that you can't even imagine. Any number below two that you do that same operation with, it will go into an exponentially small matter and number. This is what we call a loop. It is illogical, it doesn't make sense, and it does not make math make sense. So these are some things that, that um, I'm bringing to the fore and that I would like to question. I would like to audit the math, the world of mathematics, and I would like to audit how we view the platonic solids because I think the new wave conjugations will tell a better story of how our world works. One times one equaling one, when it could also equal a dollar, pound times a pound equaling a pound, when it could also equal four dollars or ten dollars or a hundred dollars. Does that make sense to you? Do you think the banks are abusing that? What's a quarter times a quarter? If I ask you, ask anybody in this room, what's a quarter times a quarter? And that's 25 times 25. The, court, the computer will tell, tell, the calculator will tell you 6.25 cents. But we know 25 pence times 25 pence is 625 pence. That's six pounds and 25 pence, but the computer or the banks only have to give you six and a quarter cents reference for it. Or let's say you put a dime times a dime. Oh, 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 let me get this out. Say you put a dime times a dime. You put that in your, in your calculator, it says one cent. 0 0.10 times 0 0.10 is one cent. But we know a dime times a dime is a whole dollar. But the banks gives us money based on that evaluation. Is that fair? And I might get shot about talking about this right now, but I've got a book coming out called Does a Dollar Times a Dollar Equal a Dollar or Does a Dollar Times a Dollar Equal Two Dollars? And in the process, not only do I explain the death of the platonic solids, but I also introduce the new Terrian wave conjugations that replace this Euclidean way of life and gives us a three-dimensional way of seeing the world. So you can't have an, a one times one having equaling one because now what happened to the length times the length? It's the area is no longer in existence. Terence starts by posing an intriguing question. Money can't be multiplied, or can it? A penny times a penny equals what? Since the penny is no longer based upon the hard asset of gold and is now based upon an imaginary value that is equal to a virtual value of the integers or numbers, then it follows one penny times one penny equals one penny, according to the rules of current mathematics and multiplication. One penny times one penny equals two pennies, according to the laws of universal mathematics. 
one penny times one penny equals 0 0.0001. According to a calculator, a penny times a penny, 0 0.01 times 0 0.01 equals 0 0.001. Does a penny times a penny equal one penny based upon the rules of multiplication? Or does a penny times a penny equal 0 0.0001 based upon our current decimal system? A value so small that there isn't even a currency circulated for that amount by the US Department of Treasury. All calculations shown here are reasonable forms of multiplication, but which one remains consistent with observed universal phenomena? How would you like your money calculated? A nickel times a nickel equals what? A nickel is equivalent to five pennies. Then a nickel times a nickel should also equal a quarter. A nickel times a nickel according to the calculator is 0 0.05 times 0 0.05 equals 0 0.0025. Again, a value so small that there is not a currency circulated to represent it. How would you like your money calculated? A dime times a dime equals what? A dime is equivalent to 10 pennies. A dime times a dime should be equivalent to 10 pennies times 10 pennies. 10 pennies times 10 pennies is equivalent to 100 pennies, which is equal to a dollar. But a dime times a dime equals a penny according to a calculator. 0 0.10 times 0 0.10 equals 0 0.01. How would you like your money calculated? What is a quarter times a quarter? A quarter is equal to 25 pennies. Therefore, a quarter times a quarter equals 25 pennies times 25 pennies, which equals 625 pennies, which is 6.25 US dollars. Yet, a quarter times a quarter, according to the calculator, is 0 0.0625. 0.25 times 0.25 equals 0 0.0625. How would you like your money calculated? Allow me to enlighten you. If four over two is the inverse operation of two times two equaling four, then it would naturally follow that two divided by one or two over one is the inverse operation of one times one equaling two. So let's talk about this. What does your common sense tell you about these two scenarios? What do they have in common and what are their differences? Division. The number four is divided by two twice. And the truth is, the number two is divided by one twice. The proof of that, if you had two dollars and split it between two people, you would have to give each person one dollar in order for it to be even. In addition, two plus two equals four, and one plus one equals two. Subtraction, four minus two equals two, and two minus one equals one. Multiplication, two times two equals four, and one times one equals one. Does that make sense to anybody there? Does that seem like it's following any similar line of, of congruency? I mean, can you see where the mistake has occurred? And I think it's time to start right at the very beginning and walk through, walk through this thing. So the question for the Church of Truth, Love and Consciousness and all those listening, does a dollar times a dollar equal one dollar or does a dollar times a dollar equal two dollars? I have never seen anywhere in the universe where an action times an action doesn't have a reaction. So now that that's why we need to discuss this and examine it and how they came up with this strange number that, which is illogical because an area, a length times a length has to have an area. So you can't have an, a one times one having equaling one because now what happened to the length times the length? It's, the area is no longer in existence. Mm -hmm.